I like thinking about cool mathematical ideas, and then I really like taking those ideas and making them real into tangible physical objects like sculpture. And I especially like getting together a group of people to help me make these cool physical things as part of a hands-on activity. So this giant sculpture that I made while visiting Alto University in Helsinki is just my kind of thing. About 25 students helped me make these two mirror image orbs during a four-hour workshop. First we worked in the wood shop, stacking plywood rectangles and tracing the master template onto the top one. These stacks are held together with sheetrock screws, which keep everything aligned during the drilling and cutting. There are 18 holes to drill through in each stack. The holes will be used later for connecting the parts together, so they need to be positioned pretty accurately. Then we take the stacks into the room with the bandsaw to cut them out. There's a lot of sawing necessary to get the shape free from the rectangle. The part shape is carefully designed to meet with other copies of itself in all different ways. There's a slot in the middle of each part which joins with the slot in another part and needs to be just the right width. Half the pieces are for each mirror image orb, so the wood was flipped over for half of them to make mirror image parts. With everybody taking turns, we needed about 15 minutes to cut out each stack of parts, but that gives us 11 pieces to use when we take each stack apart. Then we go upstairs to the classroom where we assemble the parts. Initially, we can work in a modular way, thinking of the orb as consisting of 20 modules and each module as made of three parts that join using the holes at one end of the part shape. Joining three pieces with cable ties to make a module is fast and easy, but joining the modules together is confusing. It took a couple of tries to work out the best way to begin, but eventually we discovered how to make an initial cycle of five modules while holding them up in the air. Once these are cable tied together, we have a good start for adding more modules. The assembly is partly an exercise in symmetry and spatial visualization. To build it correctly, you need to see the patterns and continue them in other places, but perhaps rotated or upside down. The second set of five modules has to weave somehow among the first five, but the long arms make this tricky. If you can visualize how the parts must end up, you can eventually get them into position. We have a big enough group so it's easy to have some people hold everything in the air while others make the cable tie connections. At this stage, it's half complete and the interconnected structure is fairly rigid, so we were able to suspend it on a rope and work around it from all sides. Now we're adding single pieces rather than modules, as the arms on the modules would get too tangled. But we always add five pieces at a time, maintaining a vertical axis of five-fold symmetry. One person can hold a part in position while others make the connections. Soon, all the upper connections are complete and it seems easier to turn it over and let the finished portion rest on the floor. Again, we can work around from all sides, always adding five parts at once to maintain the symmetry. Letting the symmetry guide us makes it easy to see if a part is incorrectly positioned, differently from the others. As we go along, everyone's looking for all the places where the holes come together and connections can be made. After threading the cable ties through, they're pulled snugly and we can clip the ends. Before long, the first orb is completely assembled. It took about an hour and a half, not including the cutting and drilling. It looks just like I imagined, and it's extremely rigid. The many interior connections triangulate it in a sturdy way, even though it's made of thin plywood just four millimeters thick. Now we take the first orb out of the room to hang it up and make room for the second. I gave no instructions at all for the second orb, except to make a mirror image of the first. The students knew just what to do, and they finished it in 55 minutes, much faster than the time for the first one when I was helping. We hung the second one as well, and I must say they look spectacular. I am very happy with the way it came out. I call the sculpture Alto. It consists of the two orbs. It's now hanging temporarily in the design factory, and later will be moved to another building at Alto University. If you happen to be in Finland, in the Helsinki area, go take a look.